Hi everyone, so today I'll be talking about um, the immune system, but just to say that recently we talked about the cells and likely on diffusion. So I just want to have a note on diffusion. Dif diffusion is like osmosis and the lipid bilayer is like a semi-permeable membrane in it. So let's get on with this. So this series of lectures that I'm going to make is based on physics, maths, biology and chemistry because they're all based on each other. Like um, biology is based on chemistry and that's based on physics and that's based on maths. So I'll do more on the next week. So about the immune system, the immune system is a system where there's going to be lots of different kinds of cells. But it's not just cells, like you might think of the macrophages, like the macrophages, um, they will eat up cells and viruses. I mean, they'll eat up bacteria and viruses so that they won't hurt the body. But you, you might think of that as the only kind of immune system, but there's actually a whole lot more than this. But can I talk about my, my skin? It actually acts as an as a system of immunity because it stops fungus, fungi, viruses and bacteria from getting inside directly. So we have to get inside through a cut or wound. Like when I, because once I remember in, in school, I got hit by a splinter when I was playing near the tree and then it was bleeding and then I contacted the medical people on there. So it meant that there's a chance that bacteria might have come there but viruses are different they don't come in through cuts or bleeds well they can but they like to do it through noses like coronavirus does you have to inhale coronavirus touch it through your eyes go it through your mouth so it's very important to not touch your face or anything else especially in this pandemic so about the immune system i i want to show this there's the multipotent hemo to poietic stem cell and then all you need to know about that cell is that it splits up into two cells which basically or it splits up into that cell and then it can choose between the myeloid stem cell and the lymphoid stem cell and that basically just means um, it will change depending on the number of proteins it encounters or signals from cytokines so for myeloid stem cell it can go into megacardioblast and all of these other things. And when you hear the word blast, it basically means like it's creating a new cell because I remember that in the bone marrow, there's this cell called the osteoblast and the osteoblast will create new bone cells and there's the osteoclast and it will destroy new bone cells. So beware for the blast and clast words in cells. So you can see here that the myeloblast turns into a basophil, a basophil, a neutrophil, and an isosphere. So the neutrophils come in your blood and then they are very effective against bacteria because they can kill it with toxins and many other things. And the macrophages, macrophages are very, very good. And macrophages are part of something called innate immunity. Innate immunity. And innate immunity and innate immunity basically means that it's there all the time like it's there at 12 o'clock it's there every single time to protect against any kind of intruder that might want to harm your body but there's uh, another one and then it's specialized and it will and it will specifically target against the thing And specialized ones, they can include the um, plasma cells because can I tell about the plasma cells? They produce antibodies. So these small lymphocytes and the T lymphocyte and the, and the B lymphocytes are just for long names, but I like to call them the T cells and the B cells. So the T cells, they can be divided into helper T cells and then the T cells will turn into helper T cells. And some of them will become memory helper T cells. So the helper T cells, they will try to stimulate the B lymphocytes. So it's not how an attack goes, this is how it grows. 
So imagine at first this bacterial infection, but the T lymphocytes, they are in lymph nodes, and there's a cell called the dendritic cell, and it's not in this diagram. I tried to find one, but I couldn't. The dendritic cells, they will activate the T cells to become a T cell, but it's activated. So the T cell, when it's activated, it will try to find a B cell, and there's something called an antigen, and the antigen, so here's the dendritic cell, and the dendritic cell has a receptor, and then the antigen is a part of it, like the antigen of a virus might be a piece of a virus, the anti antigen of a bacteria might be a ripped piece of a bacteria from a macrophage. Antigen might be shown here, it's not what it looks like, but it's just a shape. So what the dendritic cell does is that it will try to find a T cell that has the correct receptor to it. And once it's activated, then the T cell will become activated. I'm just going to draw lots of lines just to make sure it's activated. So the T cell is activated now. Now the T cell will go further into a lymph node and lymph nodes are all over your body. And it will try to activate a B cell. So the B cell must have a receptor that looks like the antigen. So the T cell will go around and it's the activated one, trying to find a B cell. Now imagine that as a B cell. B, T. And now the B cell must have a receptor like that. Now if that matches, then the B cell will become activated and the B cell will turn, will spit up and keep on spitting up and turn into some, some of them will get turned off into memory B cells and some of them will get turned into plasma cells. So plasma cells make antibody right here, like the B lymphocytes, they can make plasma cells and plasma cells are very essential when they make antibodies. And you might be thinking, well, why can't we just make plasma cells? Because the memory B cells, they do something special. So if it ever encounters that one ever again, then the memory B cells, after they get a call from the dendritic cell, then the memory B cells will turn into plasma cells and then they will continue on doing that. And there's many, many, like, so many uh, memory B cells. So if, if you get that attack, like, lots of times, then there will still be memory B cells. And note that um, the memory B cells they produce antibodies, and the antibodies do one of the following. So I've talked about innate and specialised. So the antibodies, they have different things, like there's an antibody. I'm just going to draw a quick one. There's an antibody here. So that's only one side of the antibody. And you have to split these into three parts, the C part and the V part. We call that a C part and a V part because that's a variable part. It can change depending on the antigen, it can change into different shapes so that the receptor will match. But that's called the V part because it's a variable part. And that's called the C part because it's a constant part. So they connect by something called a disulfide bridge. And remember, di means it's two, right? And two sulfates. Two sulfides mean there's two sulfur. Two sulfates, so it will connect it to another one of these. Now, when you have that, you mark that as a V and mark that as a C, then it will also do it. So, what's the goal of these antibodies? So, what happens is that the bacteria is the evil one. The evil one. So the bacteria, um, when it gets attacked by the antibodies, let's draw it as that. Oh, it's quite hard to draw antibodies. Okay, how does draw it sticks for a bit? Like that. When it's like that, then the macrophages and the macro macrophages are a grown-up type of thing called a phagocyte. And like what I said, they are named after the process which they use, phagocytosis. And phagocytosis is when these projections, and when it tries to engulf it, 
and then guess what? If you remember from the last one, but um, but what's that? And the the peroxisome will get the toxins and try to kill the bacteria and the lysosome will melt it up and then it's going to put that in the vacuole which is the trash can of a cell i'm not saying that it's bad like again i'm saying it's where it puts all their trash in it so back to the immune system so the bacteria um is safe to do it because the antibodies can stick to it but for viruses um it would make sure that the viruses can't infect it because the viruses need receptors to infect it and the antibodies will block the receptor. And, and it's like that because when the B cells produce the antibodies, they have a specific bit in their DNA, which is how their receptor is shaped, like that. And then they're gonna turn that into pre-mRNA and then it's gonna transport that into mRNA. And then the mRNA will um, be executed by the ribosomes and then ribosomes will make the specific shape on the antibody like that but it's that version okay everyone so i think i've talked about it and maybe i could touch a little bit deeper in like the next after the next one and the next one would be about how a virus infects a cell and that's quite interesting because to me like how can a dead thing infect it because like viruses are on the bridge on the gates between dead and life so i'd like to see um what i could learn and what you could learn about how a virus infects a cell okay everyone i think that's it i hope you enjoyed this one and i hope you enjoyed the next one bye